Good morning, everybody out there worldwide. Hope everybody's having a great, I don't know if anybody's in here yet. Hope everybody's having a great week, great day so far. Uh, what should I put in my pinned comment? I put my text message number in here. Hope all, all y'all are having a great day, uh, being productive, getting some good stuff going. As y'all, if y'all are, as y'all are coming in here, shout yourselves out in the comment section. We're gonna get into this conversation real quick. We're gonna talk about how to grow yourself, and uh, yeah, I ain't even gotta give too much more background on this. Shout yourselves out in the comment section. Tell me where you are checking in from, so I know who I'm talking to. Tell me where y'all are checking in from. Tell me your location where y'all are checking in. We're going to get into this. Um, if you're not familiar with me, I'll introduce myself in a second. I'm in Vegas today on my way to the uh, 10X, 10X conference. Already here, but going to the 10X conference today is the second of a three-day conference. Kind of three and a half days. So this is the second full day of the event. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin, former nine-year pro athlete, author of 33 books, done four TED Talks, created this whole frame called Work On Your Game. It's all about taking the mental tools and the strategies to help athletes get to the top 1% in sports. And we translate those tools over from the sports world to the business world. So professionals like yourselves do three specific things. Number one, perform at a higher level. That means giving more value to the people that you serve. Number two, being more consistent at what you do, which means you are doing it over and over and over again. And number three, making more money. I mean, we're all in business to make money. I mean, the only reason that we do business is to make money. I know you would do your job for free, but you don't do it for free. So I know you would, but you don't. So we all do our business to make money on vacation. Shout out to everybody on vacation in Puerto Rico. So the topic here today is how to invest in yourself and grow. Uh, how to invest in yourself and grow. I'm looking at somebody just text me, tell me they got a seat already saved in the, in the venue. I'm like, why are these people in here already? <laughs> they already in here is... They already inside the joint. I got to reply to this. Uh, people already got seats saved inside the venue. I don't know why they're there so early. I don't even go inside the venue. The joint don't start till 10 o'clock. It's 9.15. They're already in there. But early is on time. So I guess I guess that's the way some these people are operating at these conferences. I don't get there super early. I get there early, but not that early. Anyway. Hey, Raquel, what's going on? Good afternoon to you. Or good morning. It's afternoon, afternoon to y'all on the East Coast. So anyway, we're talking about growing yourself. And I'm a big advocate of investing in yourself and you know, actually doing things to consciously and intentionally make yourselves better. And y'all know I talk about that all the time. You know, I work in the professional and personal development space. So of course I'm big on that. So I want to go over three specific things you would do with this. I'm not going to go super long here. I, I am going to get to the venue early so I can talk to a few people. I need to walk around, you know, shake some hands, smile at some people, all that, all that networking stuff that we do here. So let's talk about this. How to invest in yourself and grow. Three specific points I want to give you. Number one, develop and set aside a budget for investing in yourself. You need this. You need a budget for investing in yourself. If you run a business, your business should have a budget for you know, how do we where do we put money aside so that we can make the business better? How can we make things better? How can we improve our products? You have a budget. If you run a business, there's a budget for improving the products or the service, or at least there should be. If there's not, then your business is on its way out of business. We need a budget for hiring staff. We need a budget for making sure that the staff is continually trained so that they know how to sell the products, so they know how to talk to the customer, so they know how to deal with customer service issues. You got to have a budget for that stuff. We need a budget. If you have a physical building, you got to have a budget for all the stuff in the building. Last night, as a matter of fact, I was having a, I had a dinner with, it was about eight of us at dinner last night, but a few people that I know, I knew before I got to this conference and a few of them that I met there. And at that dinner, one of the guys there, he has a plane. He has his own jet that he flies around because he's in the, his businesses. You no, know, he's active in business and he has a big family. And he was like, you know, I needed to stop focusing on saving money on travel by flying commercial and invest in this jet so I could get to places faster and I could have more time with my family it, at the expense of I'm putting the money into the jet. I'll spend more money traveling on the jet so I can go faster so I can have more time at home with my family. And the point of it is this. 
in the jet, he was, he was explaining, somebody was asking him all these questions about the jet. He was explaining how there's a, a maintenance investment that you make. So him and a couple of his uh, business colleagues, his business partners, they all you know share in owning the jet. And each one of them every month has to pay. It was like a certain amount, a couple thousand dollars a month that they invest into the maintenance of the jet. And that's not even that there's regular maintenance that you always had to do with the jet because every part on the plane costs a lot of money. This is his exp explanation. I don't own a jet. One day I will, but he was explaining this. And then the other thing was they put a certain amount of money into an emergency fund for the jet. So every month there's a certain amount of money that each one of the owners of the plane has to put in for the regular maintenance and for the emergency maintenance. The whole point being they understand that over time there's going to be money that needs to go into that to maintaining that plane because they use that plane to get around and live their lives and do their business. It's the same thing with you. Even if you don't own an airplane, even if you don't like getting airplanes, even if you go everywhere by Uber and you walk, here's the thing. Over time, you are your, you're your biggest product. You're your most important product, which means you need to be putting money aside or thinking about how much money you need to be investing into the growth and in, and the advancement of your number one product, which is you as a person. You're the, your number one product. So if you own a business, the business is secondary to you as a number one product, because if you are not advancing then that business can't advance, no business can advance further than the person who is running it. So if you are not growing consistently, then how is the business going to grow consistently? Well, that's a trick question because it's not going to. All right, it's not going to grow any further than you. Any of you familiar with a guy named John Maxwell? Yesterday at the there was a networking event I went to last night and I met a guy whose background is in um, he's a military vet. I think I don't know how many years he's in the military. Actually, he didn't tell me, but he. What was he talking about? He's in the coaching industry. So we were talking a little bit about coaching. I was telling him how I do my coaching. He was talking about how he does his coaching. And he is a John Maxwell certified coach. You don't know who John Maxwell is. He's a big personal development author. You should know who he is. And the thing is, John Maxwell wrote a book called The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And one of the laws is called the law of the lid. And the law of the lid states that your organization, whatever organization you're leading, it can be a business, it can be your family, it can be a sports team. It can be a church. That organization cannot grow any further than the leader of the organization has grown. So if the leader is a level five person, then that organization will never grow beyond a level five because the leader is the lid that is holding them back. Now, if the leader becomes a level eight, now the organization can grow to a level eight and so forth and so on. Or if you replace the, the level five leader with a level 10 leader, now the organization is going to grow more because you have a, a more capable leader in charge. Here's the thing. You are your organization. All right, everybody catching these these metaphors that I'm giving you, these analogies, you are your organization. You will never grow as a person and whatever you consider growth, whether you're talking your money, your relationships, your success, your accomplishments, your resume, whatever, you will not grow any more than you have chosen to grow yourself as a person. So you must have a budget set aside. When I say budget, time, money, attention, energy, and focus, you need to be thinking about how am I going to use these things to make myself a more valuable individual? And this is a consistent thing. This is not a one-time thing. Is a consistent thing. Understand that when you graduated from school, high school, college, whatever, they have a ceremony called a commencement, right? What does commence mean? Commence means a beginning. It's not an end. It's a beginning. Even though the graduation comes at the end, it's a commencement of the rest of your life. So when you get out of school, the only growth that you're going to make has to be conscious and intentional. It's not automatic. So you go to school, they make you kind of grow and learn and or at least pretend to learn and, you know, uh, regurgitate information so that you can graduate from one grade to the next. When you get out of school, the only time you're going to grow is if you do it on purpose. And studies have shown that most people, when they get out of school, whatever level they complete, that most people never read another book for the rest of their lives. Did y'all know that? That most people never read another book after they get out of school for the rest of their lives because they're not forced to do it. Moving on, point number two. We are talking here today about how to grow yourself intentionally. I'm, I would take more time on these. I'm going a little bit faster today because I'm going to get down to this conference. I'm here to meet people. So I'm, I still mess with y'all. That's why I'm doing this live. But I, I am here to meet some people in person. Appreciate it, just though. So number two, get clear on exactly what you want to get better at. When you go to an event, for example, like this event that I'm at right now. When you go to an event or something like this, or you're going to invest in yourself, or you got some money, you want to invest in yourself, what do you do with this money? You need to know exactly what problem you want to solve. You need to know what problem you're going to solve. So when I go to a conference, I have an idea of what I want to do when I go to an event like this. I know what I'm doing this year. I know what I'm trying to do in my business. I know the most important areas that I'm focused on. So when I go to an event like this, the main reason I came to this particular event, I'm in Vegas right now at the, at the 10X conference, for those who don't know. 
the reason I came to this particular event is because there were a bunch of people who I know and respect who I knew would be here and I'm meeting those people. And I, some of them I had never met in person. So I wanted to meet them in person. And because I know the type of people that get attracted to this particular event, I know who the people are that run this. I know what kind of people that they attract. I said, I want to be in a room with a bunch of people who are like that because there's a business opportunity there. So that's why I came to this event. That that's me. Other people go to events for different reasons. You might go to an event because you're really trying to vet who's the person running it. Maybe you're thinking about making an investment with this person. Maybe they're trying to make an investment with you, but you need to know what you're trying to get better at. Because if you don't know what you're trying to get better at, then almost anything could be a good answer for you. Anything could be a good outcome for you. Because there are a thousand different ways that you could use your time, money, attention, energy, and focus. So you need to know all right, what problem am I trying to solve so that you can make a logical, a rational decision about when and where to make those investments. So you got to get clear on what your outcome areas are. What are your three most important areas for improvement? That's a simple question you could ask yourself. Johnny, what's good? Johnny, are you here? Are you in Vegas, Johnny? Johnny Pardo came into the live. I'm, I'm just shouting Johnny out. I was on Johnny's podcast uh, not too long ago. But Johnny, if you are in Vegas, please send me a send me a DM. Definitely want to meet you while we're out here. If you made it to if you made it to Vegas. So anyway, back to what I was saying. What are your three most important areas for improvement? What are you trying to get better at? All right, if you're going to invest in yourself, you got to know what you want to get better at. All right, what are your problems? Where does it hurt? Even if you don't know exactly how you're going to solve it. For example, all right, you go to the doctor or the dentist, right? You might not know exactly what the problem is. Maybe you, but usually people go to a doctor or a dentist because there's a problem. Or you're, if you're not getting a regular checkup, you go in there because there's an issue. Right. Your tooth, your tooth hurts. You go to the dentist. You say, all right, my tooth is hurting. The dentist says, OK, which tooth? Where is it hurting at? All right. Can you eat food there? Can you eat hot food? Can you eat cold food? Can you chew stuff? Do you avoid using that side of your mouth? Whatever. Then it's going to ask a bunch of questions. Try to figure out what the issue is. You know that your tooth is hurting over here. Now, the dentist is going to tell you, OK, here's the actual issue. You got this, this, this you need a root canal. You got a cavity. We got to remove this. This tooth is broken, whatever. They're going to tell you exactly how we fix it. But you got to point out to them what the problem is. If you don't tell them what the problem is, then they can't help you. So you go to the doctor, same thing. The doctor says, what's the issue? You say, well, I got a headache or my stomach hurts or I can't hold down food or I've been having no, uh, I've been constipated or I've been having too much trips to the bathroom. Whatever the situation is, they're going to help you and they're going to do some tests based on what you told them. And they're going to figure out what the real detailed issue is and they're going to explain to you how to fix the detailed issue. You get what I'm saying here? So you got to know what the problem is so that you can go and address the actual issue. Jamarius said you've been doing the b-ball drill. Shout out to everybody doing basketball drill. Shout out to ball players out there. Hoopanbook.com, by the way, anybody who wants basketball drill. So you got to know what your actual problem is, folks. If you don't know what the problem is, again, you don't have to know the details because you might not know. Because if you knew exactly what the issue is, then you could probably fix it. But you got to be able to tell me. I get on a call with somebody. They're interested in getting coaching or they're interested in joining Work On Your Game University. Well, the first thing I'm asking is, OK, what's the biggest challenge right now? Uh, you didn't get on this call for nothing. You got on this call because there's something you want to address. What is it that you want to address? So then they tell me. Then based on what they say, I start asking questions and I diagnose what the deeper issue is. So, again, I go to the doctor and say my stomach hurts. Well, the doctor's not just going to go off of that. They're going to say, OK, when is it hurting? Why is it hurting? How long has it been hurting? What is there something that triggers it? Does it hurt when you eat? Does it hurt when you sleep? Does it hurt when you exercise? Does it hurt when you drink water? Does it just hurt for no reason? Like where where is the actual issue being triggered by? The doctor knows better than me. So he's going to ask the right questions, going to lead me to give him the information so he can diagnose the real issue. That's my job as a coach. That's your job. If you're someone who's in in a, a field of expertise, for example, if you're helping people like the consulting space. It's number three. So no, you all got number two. Number two is you got to know exactly what problems you're trying to solve. Number three. We are talking how to grow yourself, how to do this consciously and intentionally. Number three, use your dead time to your advantage. What does that mean? Dead time is the time when maybe your hands may not be free. Maybe your eyes may not be free. But what are you doing with that time? Because it adds up. For example, how many of you commute to work or to school every single day? If you commute 30 minutes to work and 30 minutes home every day, that's an hour every single day. What are you doing with that hour while you're on a train? or in Uber, or you're walking, or you're in your car. That 30 minutes a day, if you listen to an audiobook and you put it on, let's say, one and a half speed, you know how many audiobooks you could consume over the course of a year? If you're going to work or school five days a week, that's 30 minutes, put it on one and a half or two X speed, that's an hour, let's say that's an hour and a half to two hours of material you could consume every single day. Over the course of a year, you could become a, a serious you could become better than 90% of the world in knowledge on a certain subject 
over the course of a year if you use that time the right way. You'd be listening to audio books. You'd be taking courses. You'd be listening to somebody's podcast, at least in someone, one that's educational, not just entertaining. So many things you would do with that dead time. I was on a plane uh, two days ago flying from Miami to Vegas. It was like a five-hour flight. You know what I did on that flight? I paid $25 for the in-flight Wi-Fi, and I used that time to work. I worked that five hours while I was on the plane. I had a bunch of emails I needed to catch up on, a bunch of stuff that I needed to read, and I invested that 25 bucks into that Wi-Fi, and all that's going to get written off on my taxes anyway. So it's not like I paid for it, but I really didn't. And I used that dead time to catch up on the things that I'm doing. If I go on a long drive, like, for example, if I go to Orlando from Miami, it's like a three, four-hour drive. I'll rent a car instead of flying. I'll just drive to Orlando or, dr or drive back. And I use that time and I'm listening to audio. I can listen to a whole audio book in three hours, put it on 2x speed. I'll listen to the whole book. So now I just, I read quote unquote a book in the time it took me to drive from here to here. Whereas somebody else, you listen to, to a, a mixtape. Like, what is that going to do to move your career forward? What is that going to do to move your life forward? How is that going to help your family? Right, so these are the kind of things you got to be thinking about if you want to grow yourself and want to move yourself to another level and understand that all of this, folks, is a it starts with your principles of understanding that you are serious about growth. That's the first. That's the number one thing. That's the principle. Strategy is these things that I'm talking about. So let's listen to an audio book instead of just. What is this? I'm just looking at my text coming in. So the strategy is what are the things that I can do to actually make this work? And the tactics are the different ways that you do it. So a tactic can be listen to an audio book. Another tactic can be uh, listen to a YouTube. Don't watch YouTube while you're driving. Listen to a YouTube video while you're driving. Another tactic can be listen to a podcast, like a, a personal development podcast, something that's about your growth or you want to get in real estate, getting the information about that. So these are the tactics. You got a lot of different options for what you're going to do with that. The strategy is. I'm going to use this time. And the principle is I'm using this. Time. The principle is I'm going to make myself better. and I'm going to take every avail available minute to do it. So we got principles, strategies and tactics in that order. And at my last event, at my last work on your game live event, I talked about this a lot. We spent a lot of time on this is when I started talking about it. I noticed the people who were there, they really that really caught their eyes. And so we went really deep on that topic. So if you haven't gotten into any of my events yet, you haven't gotten into my university yet, then I would suggest you take this as a, you take this as a, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Take this as an invitation that you do that. Work on your game university. I just put the link. Let me put this link here. I put that as a pinned comment. Work on your game university.com. So if you haven't joined yet, go there. You can either schedule a call with me. You want to get into my full coaching program, get coached by me. If you would like to get access to the courses where you don't have to be coached by me, but you get access to all the course material. If you're being coached, you get all the courses anyway. But you can get access to all the courses right now. Just go to that link. Work on your game. Excuse me. University.com. So anybody got a question or comment, go ahead and post it. I'm going to wrap this up in a minute. I am at a conference. I'm not at the conference right now, but I'm about to go downstairs to the conference. So you got a question, put it in the comments. I'm going to recap my three points and we'll wrap this up. I usually go longer than this, honestly. And actually, I got even more points that I didn't even um, go into here today. But I will. When I'm back home, I, I usually do my longer lives. Y'all know how I do if y'all follow me. So I'm going to go over these three points. And I'm going to answer questions. How to invest in yourself and grow yourself intentionally. Number one, you must set aside a budget for investing in yourself. The same way every business has a budget for hiring staff, for maintenance, for their employees, for uh, the building. You got a budget for that stuff because, you know, you need to invest and to keep those things good and to make them better. Same thing for yourself. You're the most important product in your life. You got to have a budget for making yourself better. You must have this. Number two, what problems do you want to solve? You need to know what issues you want to address with the investments that you make so that you can make a, a educated decision as to which direction you want to look for the person or persons or thing or idea or information that can actually help you with whatever your issue is. Because nobody in life is perfect. Everybody has something that they want to address right now in life. I don't care if you're talking to someone with $10 billion or somebody with about five dollars in their account. Everybody has an issue or something that they want to address. So don't think that if you're in a situation right now where everything's not popping off for you, you look at somebody who seems to be doing better than you. Don't think they don't have challenges. They got challenges, too. Might not be the same kind of challenges as you, but everybody has a challenge. And number three, use dead time to your advantage. You should be using every minute that you have available to make yourself a more valuable individual. Those minutes add up. So it might only be 15 minutes a day, but 15 minutes a day over the course of a month is how many minutes? All right, you could consume an entire book in that time. You could learn, a, you could damn near learn a language in that time. You can get a lot of information in that time if you allow it to add up and comp compound over time. So the question is, 
Raquel says, should we wait to figure out what we want to work on before contacting them? No, you should not, Raquel, because my job as a coach and a, I'm a, or a consultant, my job is to figure out based on your goals and based on where you're at right now, all right, what is the bridge between where you're at and where you want to get to? So even if you're not specific, you don't specifically know, then first of all, I'm going to figure out where you want to go because you want to go somewhere. Everybody's trying to go somewhere. And where are you at? All right. Here's the gap between here's where you want to go. Here's where you're at. There's a gap here. How do we close that gap? That's my job. That's my job to help diagnose that, communicate it to you and make it make sense for you. If when it makes sense for you, that's when we start working. And that's my that is my that's my specialty. That's my superpower. The first thing is just knowing that you want something. That's the first step. So the better that the more of an idea that you have, then the you no know, quote unquote easier you can make it for somebody. It's like if I go to the doctor and the doctor says, what's the issue? I say my stomach hurts. And that's all I can tell him. My stomach hurts. Well, he may have to ask a few more questions to kind of get to the detail. Now, if I say, hey, doc, my stomach hurts every time I eat an apple or an orange or a banana or I drink water. Now I've given him a little bit more information. So maybe he won't have to ask as many questions. So I kind of put him on the right path. But it, even if all I said was my stomach hurts, doctor, he is his job to figure it out. That's why I'm paying him. Now I'm paying him to figure it out. That's the whole point. So Raquel said, I've never been able to figure out what I want. That's the exact reason why you need to schedule a call with me. So go to work on your game university.com. Raquel, schedule a call with me. That's the exact reason why you should do it. That's not a reason not to do it. That's a reason to do it. You know you want to go somewhere. That's the most important part. Now, if you don't want to go anywhere, then don't schedule a call. <laughs> but if you know you want to go somewhere, then that's the exact reason why you should do it. What are they talking about? I'm just checking my, somebody sent me an email. I don't even know what this is. What? Oh, my God. All right, whatever. All right, so I'm going to go down to this conference in a second. Any other questions I can answer, somebody post them in the comments section. I'm going to be here for like two more minutes, and then we're going to wrap this up. I ordered an um, Amazon delivery yesterday. They sent me all these uh, green bananas. Okay. You don't know where you want to go. Just schedule a call with me, and we'll, we'll talk about it. You want to do something, right? You know you want to go somewhere. That's the most important part is just knowing that there's, a, there's an intention. That's the most important part. If, if there's an intention to advance, to move forward, you know that where you're at is not where you want to be. That's that's important. Now, if somebody says I'm good where I'm at. Now, that is not that's not the person I want to. I want to talk to the person who's good where they're at. Unless they're already working with me, they're good where they're at, and now they're happy that we got there. That person is cool. But if you have never uh, invested in yourself and you're good where you're at, then no, that's not my person. But usually those people don't come into my world. All right, everybody, I appreciate you all's time. I didn't even do it, do this on Facebook. I didn't even want to test the Wi-Fi here, bandwidth. We just want to take what we can get here. So I will be uh, posting more on my story today. So pay attention to my story. I want to see what's happening inside this conference. May introduce you to some people that I meet. I didn't really do that that much yesterday. I was just talking to people, not really pulling my phone out. But um, at this conference here today, I have heard, y'all can't tell me, that y'all can't tell anybody that I told you this, but I can't give, I can't name drop, but y'all going to see when, and when I'm at the conference, I'm posting who's coming out, who's speaking and all that stuff at the conference today. I know from insider information that there are going to be some big names coming here today. I ain't saying no names. I just heard. All right. Nobody told me. I just heard. So anyway, y'all stay tuned. Watch my story today. Y'all want to see how it goes down inside of a conference. I'm going to post a reel in a second as well. Got the side one I'm going to talk about. I'm going to do that reel in one second right after this. All right, everybody, appreciate you all's time. Yeah, Raquel, schedule time with me, and let's get on a call and talk. All right, everybody, have a great, what's today, Wednesday? Wednesday. Work on your game. Out of here.